All right, thank you, Dan. Our medical expert, Dr. Cedric McFadden, is joining us today as we continue this conversation about COVID-19. And today we're going to focus in on what happens to your lungs. So when COVID-19 and coronavirus moves on into your system, what is it doing to you? It initially attacks the lining or the epithelial lining, the surface of the upper respiratory system. So that's your, your nose, the pharynx, and the windpipes. If it stays there, you have very limited disease. And what happens as it attaches there, it creates local damage. It destroys the cells that line those surfaces and it replicates. Uh, this explains a part of the fever and a part of the cough that people will have. And if it stays there, again, that's very limited damage. It's only when it goes out into the periphery of the lungs that it creates more of that severe damage that may require hospitalization, perhaps even care in the ICU with even a ventilator. Um, the air that comes in through your nose that you breathe in, it goes to these tiny sacs called the alveoli. Mm -hmm. And when it goes to these sacs, normally that, 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 that lining is very thin. Oxygen diffuses across there, gets to the red blood cell, and that's how you fuse the body. Mm -hmm. Very scientific, right? But in this case, what happens is with the coronavirus, that, that, that lining or that sac becomes thickened and it becomes harder for that oxygen to transport across that barrier, and it creates problems with breathing, oxygenation. It, in very severe cases, may cause you, again, to need the ventilator. And then we're looking at this amazing um, animation. Yes. Uh, describe what's happening, what we're seeing in this video, the yellow versus the blue that we're looking at. So this is the virtual or 3D image of a patient that's affected with the coronavirus. And in this particular case, everything that you see that's blue is normal lung tissue, okay? Everything that you see in yellow is tissue that's been damaged by the virus itself. And what's very interesting in this particular uh, image is that normally if you have a pneumonia, you perhaps have one or two isolated segments of the lung that's involved. But see how diffuse or how widespread the damage yeah, is. Yeah, so it's worse, right? It is, it is absolutely worse, and it's a quite striking image to, to actually look at. Absolutely. So who is this happening to? When we hear about the statistics, is it... Pretty much everybody who's having those breathing problems is having some damage to the lung, or do we even know that? Like, how do we know who, who's winding up with this damage, and is it permanent? Well, so we don't know, first of all, how many patients with coronavirus or COVID-19 have this degree of lung damage. There's some speculation that if we were to look at patients with coronavirus, we'd see a lot much more lung damage than we actually anticipate. So someone with very minimal symptoms could still have some lung damage if we were looking to. And in some cases, that lung damage can produce other problems, such as ongoing problems with infections within the airway, infections within the lungs that may require other procedures down the line to actually control it help. So there's still so much to learn about this. Um, when it comes to that kind of, of that image, for example, that case, mm -hmm. let's take that one. I mean, what kind of long term issues might you have? I mean, would you have actual continued breathing problems all through your life or can you build that back over time? So not only may you have breathing problems, but keep in mind that the infection that you have in the lungs may set off a whole degree of other inflammatory conditions that may cause other organs to have damage. For instance, the kidneys or even the heart. Okay. So it can just be limited to the lungs, but again, if more severe cases are present, it can be present throughout the body as well. So one more reason to stay home, right? Stay home. To avoid this thing at yes, all costs. Absolutely. Uh, and, and those who are more prone to complications, it makes some sense, right? That if you already are somebody with kidney problems or mm -hmm. other things going on, they, they can make you more susceptible to all these other filtering out problems. Because the body has to have the fighter cells available, those white blood cells to be able to fight the infection. So that's why folks with diabetes, their white blood cell count doesn't, their white blood cells aren't strong enough. It's not going to fight it. And so it sets up a, uh, a predicament where the body can't control this particular infection that's present. Let's keep it away. COVID-19, we do not, you are not welcome here. And we appreciate you giving us the insight into Thank this because that's important to understand. And especially, you know, people are having those breathing problems. It helps to understand what's actually going on with this. Dr. C, thank you so thank much. You. And we have live viewer questions coming up at 5 o'clock, mm -hmm. hopefully, depending upon what happens with programming. But if we don't get on fi at 5 o'clock with Dr. C, we'll jump on Facebook and do it for you there. You're watching Carolina's Family at 4. We're coming right back. Thanks, Dr. C. Thank you.